Hello everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. I hope it's going to be a big treat. This is Carbach Brewing's Hopadillo IPA. Uh, this was sent to me by Tim down in Texas. So Tim, thanks a bunch my friend for sending this to me. Uh, I have had some uh, Carbach beers that, uh, that Brandon has been sending to me, but I've not had this one. Uh, this is uh, says 6.6% here on right beer. I'm not really sure it has it on the can anywhere. I don't think it does. And it should. They should put that on the can. Uh, it says crafted on 07 14 16. Got the date on the bottom of it, but there's no IBUs or ABV written on the can anywhere. So, kind of need that on there. My opinion. Just my opinion, though. Uh, over at uh, Ray Beer, they listed at 6.6% uh, and 70 IBUs. Untapped has it at 6.6% and 65 IBUs. <laughs> and Bear Advocate has it at 66 .6 and no IBUs listed. So I guess we have to take what we can get as far as information there, guys. It's either 65 or 70 IBUs. Everybody's in agreement that it's 6.6, .6, so it's not written on the can. But we did get to date, so. One out of three? Hmm. Not so good, but better than nothing. All right, commercial description on this in here, guys. says, copper in color with ruby highlights. This Texas IPA has strong citrus aroma with hints of earthiness and spice from the added European hops. Like berry fruits are perceived before giving way to citrusy hop character. Dry and quenching, this IPA is dry hopped for added aromatic intensity, but it doesn't tell us what they dry hopped it with, whether it was European or some American hops. So we shall see what this brings to the table. Food pranks of this beer is going to be your typical IPA. The cuisine is curried in the tie, cheese and peppery, Monterey pepper jack, sharp blue cheddar, your stronger cheeses, gorgeous double Limburger, Brass Water Pint, Macaroni, Tumblr Mug, Stein Sidell. I'm using my favorite snifter today, guys. And not recommended for a salary since it's an IPA and you want to drink it while it's hoppy and not get your hand on a big malty mess. So pointed kind of easy down the side, still produced quite a bit of head, so it tells me it's very well carbonated. Two fingers of head on that four big soapy bubbles, and it's not a bright white head. It's got just a slight off-white color. Maybe a antique white. What do you think? Over to the light, guys, it is very clear. It definitely looks like a filtered beer to me. Nice amber, rich amber color, almost, uh, almost a dark amber. So let's get a nose on it and see what we can perceive. I am getting a strong hot presence. It is very citrusy. I'm getting some earthy, spicy aromas there from the European hops. Maybe just a slight hint of some pine in there, guys. Very citrusy, though. Let's give it a hit. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Tim. Decent. Not your outstanding world-class beer in my opinion from that one sip
kind of easy drinking for a 6.6%. Not too bitter on the back end with the 65 or 70 IBUs. Alcohol is very well hidden. It's very citrusy. But from the European hops, I am getting some of that earthy, herbal aromas there. It's, it's decent, guys. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think it's outstanding. It's definitely not a West Coast style. That up in your face, piney, grapefruity pineapple. It is not. So, uh, Hopadillo is what they call this. So, let me take it back and let her have a couple sips and sip on it for just a little bit. And we'll come back and see where she ends up. Hey guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. The other half liked it. Uh, she thought it was tasty. And I do too. I, I think it's a tasty beer. And like I said earlier, I don't think it's world class or outstanding or anything like that. But it is a very tasty beer. Uh, Carmack does some pretty tasty stuff. They, they really, really do. The only fuss I've got, even though they've got a date on the bottom of it, and it is a canned on date, they leave us guessing on the ABB and the IBUs. Uh, and the IBUs aren't super critical on most beers, but the IPAs and the double IPAs, you kind of want that information. Uh, so, uh, uh, if, it had, if it had the that information, I would give it a better grade than I'm going to give it. But looking, going in the beer store and you see this on the shelf, and you look and you say, ah, and you check the bottom and you say, yeah, it's got a date, and you're looking, well, how big a beer is it? Is it? 4%, 5%, 6%? You don't have any idea. They need to print that on that. Uh, a lot of these guys go for these fancy painted up cans and spend a lot of money on this graphics and having these cans produced like that. And some of the beer companies just use a plain Jane Silver can with a stick on label and the beers inside of them are freaking outstanding. So, now maybe they're using the same can and the recipe's changing from year to year, whatever. But I think we need that on the can. So that's where I'm going to leave it. And we're going to do the final chug. And I'm going to tell you what I think. If I hadn't told you already. Guys, in my opinion, this is an 8 beer in a 7 can. It was very tasty. If it had the IBUs and Navy B on the can, I would give this as an 8, which is an A-. minus. It would definitely be an A beer. But without that information, it gets to 7. So, numeric rating on this would probably be an 89. It's right at the door. Just need that little bit more information on the can. So, that's just my opinion, guys. That's how I feel. Especially on an IPA or a double IPA. Give me them three bits of information. ABV, IBUs, and the canned or bottled on date. Other than that, I thought it was pretty damn good. Uh, it was a nice tasty beer. I mean, like I said earlier, it's not a West Coast style, but it is a very tasty beer. To me, it reminds me of an East Coast style. Uh, really pleasant, kind of citrusy, uh, with the European hops, a little spiciness, a little herbal, floral hop presence there. So, very nice. I enjoyed it. So, Tim, thanks again, my friend, for sending it to me. Uh, let's go over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says it is 85 in the very good range. I think it's a tad better than that. I really do. I mean, uh, other than if you're expecting a West Coast style, it's not that. So, uh, I enjoyed it. I did. I'm going to leave it that, guys. Uh, over to Rate Beer. Rate Beer says 90 overall. So, I'm within one digit. If it had the ABV and IBUs on it, I would have gave it to 90. That's where I would exactly where I would give it. But without those two bits of information, especially the ABV, uh, it, I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at 89 B+. Plus. So, uh, untapped, the last place we're going to stop over to says it is 3.72. So, uh, that is the upper B category 2 as far as I'm concerned. So, in my opinion, that's about an 87. So, uh, we got an 87, uh, we got an 85, we got an 89, and we got a 90. So we're all in that little five-point grade area right there, guys. So decent beer. Definitely above average beer. Uh, I don't know what this beer costs in Texas. It's, if it's reasonable, it would be a great go-to beer. So I'm going to leave it at that. If you've had this uh, Hopadillo IPA by Carbock Brewing Company out of Houston, Texas, let me know what you think, guys. And let's go see. What's in the fridge tomorrow? See everybody then.